Spot the difference between these two sprites. You can see it better in the example here. The sprite with a normal map on the left has more dynamic lighting compared to the one on the right, which does not have a normal map. The left looks like it has more depth, it's more visually appealing than the one on the right, which gets really washed out whenever the strong light gets closer to it. Using a normal map can help you control the level of lighting detail in your game to a finer level of detail. This can elevate your pixel art and make it stand out among a lot of the shovelware that gets constantly put out there every day. To start off with doing this, we need to talk about the components, and the first of which is the diffuse texture. The diffuse is essentially just a regular colored sprite, which will be the base for what we're doing today. To put it simply, normal maps dictate how light interacts with your objects. Essentially, it fakes lighting, and it's definitely more in depth than that, but for the course of this, it's going to be a simplified version of normal maps. They can give your sprites depth, improved lighting, stylization, and overall just make them look better than they would without one. Um, actually, the way that normal maps work is like a... Alright, I know there's going to be somebody who's saying that I'm oversimplifying how normal maps work. And yes, I am. They are way more complex than what I'm making them out to be. However, that complexity doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things unless you're planning on programming a rendering engine. And I would make a video explaining the complexities if there's interest for it, but I honestly don't think there will be interest for that type of thing. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to create a normal map for your pixel art, like weapons or characters or anything really, because it works the same for everything. Alright, here's a list of weapons for my game. Albeit incomplete, I still need to make more of them. But we're going to find a weapon to make a normal map for. You know, this hammer is a little round, I did that one, this, the sword is flat. So we're going to do something more cylindrical. So I'm going to take this log right here and paste it into a new file. Using a normal map sphere is pretty good for reference when you create normal maps. Each of the colors means something. In general, you'd want areas facing a similar direction to have a similar color. These colors that are similar act in a similar way when exposed to light. Take for example the light blue. They all catch the light slightly differently from each other, creating a gradient effect when exposed to light. The same with the purples over to the right, dark blues down on the bottom left. They essentially represent the orientation of your object. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit by shrinking the sphere and overlaying it on my sprite. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I'm just editing the sphere, erasing part of it. And this is far from perfect for a normal map, but it does show the effect pretty well. It is a bit tedious doing all this, and remember, there's a lot of trial and error involved, especially if you're new to it. But just remember that having similar facing areas be the same color is a huge help. Using the method I did, um, by shrinking down that sphere, can help you get a good gradient on your normal map without having to hand place each individual pixel. Alright, so here's our normal map and our diffuse. Alright, here's a quick little guide on how you implement it in Godot 4 if you want to just go off and do it on your own, but I'm about to show you how to do that here in a second. Alright, so here we go in Godot 4. First, you want to create a sprite 2D node. Alright, there we go. On the inspector to the right, set the texture to canvas texture. Click on the canvas texture again. Set your diffuse sprite in the diffuse. And in the normal maps, you put the normal map sprite, obviously. All right, and now everything should work. And here we're going to go take a look at it real quick. All 
right, drag and drop, there we go. And you can see the light affecting it, in a way. You can see the examples to the left of the non-normal map sprites. And troubleshooting real quick. If your normal map isn't working, then make sure it's plugged into the normal map slot and not any other slot. If you have weird lighting, just know that hand pixeling can be very tricky until you get the hang of it. There's gonna be a lot of trial and error involved, especially with regards to normal maps. A normal is treated as a diffuse unless it is explicitly dropped in the normal map slot. So if you're just dropping your normal map into your scene, it's not gonna do anything special. And last, check the item coal mask on your light 2D node and make sure the light mask on your sprite 2D node all match or you know whatever you have set up just make sure that the light affects the sprite instead of ignoring it to wrap it up if your game is going to include lighting the normal maps are a thing that you might want to look into although obviously if your arc direction doesn't necessarily work with having normal maps that's fine too you know it's just it's just an option that not a lot of people think about or don't understand but it's really more simpler than it's made out to be if you stuck around until the end consider liking and subscribing for more content and more tips i definitely want to include other art tips to help you improve so hopefully see you in the next video